I am your new messiah. Those are not my words, but the words of the character who plays Clarence from the new movie, The Book of Clarence, which has provoked some strong reactions from Christian vloggers and mixed feelings from the public at large. Jay-Z and his wife Beyonce have made it clear where they stand as far as spiritual kingdoms are concerned. Their music and lifestyle speak volumes about which team they've been playing for. From the lyrics in their songs saying things like, Jesus can't save you, life starts when church ends, to the demonic and freemasonic symbolism, it's pretty clear where they've been pledging their allegiance. However, Jay-Z is involved in the release of a new faith-based movie called The Book of Clarence. In this video, we'll talk about the film, and we'll also analyze whether Jay-Z may finally be switching sides based on the information at hand. This movie is centered around the character Clarence, masterfully brought to life by Lakeith Stanfield, as he steps into the role of a street-savvy hustler, navigating the ancient streets of Jerusalem. In the relentless pursuit of supporting his family and breaking free from the clutches of debt, Clarence is a man on a relentless quest to overcome his adversities. However, fate takes an unexpected turn when Clarence encounters the enigmatic aura of the Messiah. The transformative encounter sparks a profound awakening within him, igniting a passionate desire to join the ranks of the Messiah's disciples. However, we soon find out that he wants this kind of power for the wrong reasons. In the movie trailer, Clarence is heard saying to his friend that he wants that kind of power now. This is after his friend says that he'd love to be as powerful as the Messiah in 10 years. Setting forth on a journey laden with challenges and deep introspection, Clarence faces resistance from his fellow apostles, their mistrust rooted in his tumultuous past, scarred by violence and crime. In the crucible of his decision-making, Clarence grapples with the pivotal choice of embracing a new life steeped in faith and redemption, forever altering the course of his destiny. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Bible, the transformation in the life of Clarence, in my opinion, bears a strikingly similar experience to what Saul of Tarsus experienced in the Bible. Saul was a Pharisee who hated Jesus and his teachings to the core. Not only that, he was responsible for the persecution of several believers of Jesus. Then one day, as he went on his way to Damascus to persecute more followers of Jesus, he had an encounter with the risen Lord himself. I bring this up because several believers make videos jumping to the conclusion that this is simply another mockery of God and that it's giving Antichrist vibes. However, I have a different and perhaps unpopular opinion, but you can share your own thoughts in the comments below. Just hear me out for a bit. Take a minute and listen to the encounter of Saul after he met Jesus. This is in the book of Acts chapter 9. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Eventually, Saul goes into the city as instructed, and Jesus talks to one of his followers called Ananias to lay hands on Paul so that he can recover from his blindness and also give Saul instructions on what Jesus wants him to do. And the prophet Ananias wasn't sure God knew what he was doing. After all, Saul was the same man who had caused the pain of so many believers in Jesus. He had led the persecution of so many saints. What could be more antichrist than that? In fact, Saul himself supported the stoning of Stephen who was one of the believers of Jesus. How in the world was Jesus now choosing Saul to represent him? Had he run out of loyal followers he could use? Just listen to the conversation between Jesus and Ananias. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision saying, Ananias, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. But Ananias was confused and he replied, But, Lord, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. What exactly am I getting at here? As human beings, we don't get to tell God who he chooses. That's his job. 
and many of the people working in the Kingdom of Darkness have later transferred to the Kingdom of Light. Any influential person is always a target because they have an anointing that can reach many. So most of the time, the enemy gets to them and offers them stuff they have a hard time refusing. The devil tried to do the same thing with Jesus after the fast. The problem is, most believers think things are simply black and white, without having a clear understanding of how spiritual things work or even happen. Let's get back to the movie. There's a scene in which Clarence says knowledge is stronger than belief. This is while he is still trying to become the new fake messiah. Anyone with spiritual awareness should immediately know what he's alluding to here. The Bible starts with an epic story about Adam and Eve in Genesis. And you know what made them fall? They were deceived to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From the beginning, Satan has always wanted people to go for knowledge rather than truth and life. If you pay attention to the symbolism in Jay-Z's songs, there's a lot of this symbol you'll see. And in occultic circles, there's a lot of hidden knowledge used by individuals aware of these truths to help them prosper above the average people who lack this knowledge. However, the problem with this is that we're told in scripture that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We're also told that Lucifer, or Satan, corrupted his wisdom in Ezekiel 28.17. Moreover, there are countless encounters about the race of the fallen angels that come to earth to trade knowledge and spiritual technology with humans for personal benefits. The Bible talks about them in the book of Jude. Clearly, God doesn't want us dabbling with unlicensed power or messing with information that isn't coming directly from Him. Believing in Jesus and getting authorized power from the Holy Spirit is the path He recommends. What most people don't realize, including believers, is that the devil doesn't have any power of his own. Even the power he has was given to him by God. Think about it this way. Witchcraft is using the power of God in a corrupt way. Another interesting thing about this movie is that Clarence ends up arguing with the Messiah's disciples. And the main bone of contention is that he has a bad history of swindling and all manner of sinful stuff. For instance, in the trailer we can see Clarence coming up with a plan to prove he's truly got powers like the Messiah. He fakes a healing in which he restores the sight of a friend of his who isn't really blind. And they keep this up to get even more money. It's for this reason that the disciples don't quite consider him cut out for the position he wants. And if you look into the Bible, something similar happened with Saul before his transformation to Paul after meeting Jesus. There was a lot of tension between the disciples of Jesus and Saul. They didn't want him as part of the team. And why? According to them, his sins were too much to be forgiven. I guess the question I'll ask here is which of us doesn't have a past? The gospel of Jesus is about salvation for the lost. Remember Barabbas? This was the thief released by Pilate. Jesus took his place in the crucifixion. And Barabbas represents the worst sinner there was. Yet symbolically, Jesus takes his place, and he doesn't have to die. In my opinion and understanding of grace, nobody is irredeemable. Maybe only from a man's perspective. Only God sees the heart, and only he knows whose heart he can still work with. I haven't seen the movie, obviously, because it's not out yet, but it's definitely something I'll watch. As a believer, it's important not to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. After all, once it's out, we can have more context as to whether it contradicts scripture and the gospel of Jesus as well as grace. Of course, the makers say it's not a faith-based movie, but I actually think it is. After all, anything about the redemption of a soul is faith-based in my books. Let's remember, it's important to pray for the lost. Scripture says Jesus died even for the worst offender. You don't get to choose who is redeemable and who isn't. Only he gets to do that. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't expose the works of the enemy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to be respectful and to shine the light of Jesus. God bless you.